Hello and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, case number 58. We have a great case here. We have two axial images through the left hip showing some abnormalities. And the question that I have for you guys is, in this patient with chronic osteomyelitis, the green arrow is pointing to what? Is that a sequestrum, an involucrum, a cloaca, or a Brody's abscess? What is the green arrow pointing to? And I want to come back to the two images here. So here, this is, of course, a patient with chronic osteomyelitis. So there's chronic infection here. What we see here is this area of sclerosis and expansion of the ischium or the part of the inferior pubic ramus here, right? So that's what we're seeing here. And this area of sclerosis, which is what the green arrow was pointing to, is an area of devitalized necrotic bone, also known as a sequestrum. So sequestrum is the answer here. And this area here, is a cortical defect, right? This is a defect in the bone that allows pus to extend out of the bone into the soft tissues and the skin surface forming a sinus tract. That cortical defect is a cloaca. So we're actually seeing a sequestrum on the image here on the left and on the right side, a cloaca or a cortical defect, both of which are manifestations of chronic osteomyelitis. But the answer here, of course, is, is a sequestrum. This is an area of devitalized necrotic bone often manifests as an area of sclerosis in the bone, as in this case. This is an area of necrosis within the bone known as a sequestrum in the setting of chronic osteomyelitis. So, of course, chronic osteomyelitis is long-standing infection of bone. There are three major routes to get osteomyelitis, contiguous, hematogenous, and direct inoculation. Contiguous is by far the most common route, and I tell residents and fellows to think about this as going out to in. So, oftentimes, it starts as an ulcer, at the skin surface, then there's a result in cellulitis or infection of the subcutaneous tissues. You may then get, you know, myositis or infection of the muscle, fasciitis, infection of the fascia, but eventually it, the infection goes to the level of the cortex as uh, periositis or the periosteum, excuse me, then the cortex or osteitis, and then finally into the marrow, osteomyelitis. So notice that it starts at the skin surface and then goes to the bone marrow as osteomyelitis. That's out to in or contiguous spread. Hematogenous spread is actually the exact opposite. So it's it's in to out. So it starts as osteomyelitis, then goes to the cortex as osteitis, then the periosteum, periositis, and then it goes into the soft tissues as, you know, myositis may develop an abscess, then cellulitis. So, you know, in to out. And then of course, direct inoculation occurs from direct spread, either from surgery or trauma, where the bone gets directly infected uh, from those routes. So those are the three major routes of chronic osteomyelitis. MRI is by far the most sensitive modality to diagnose acute osteomyelitis. We know that plain films lag behind by, you know, anywhere from 7 to 21 days even in showing acute osteomyelitis, right? And there's often the debate between T1 versus T2. Well, T2 is more sensitive for the diagnosis of osteomyelitis, right, because of the bone marrow edema and seeing T2 hyperintense or bright signal. But T1 is more specific, right, because when you have confluent dark signal that replaces the normal fatty bright marrow that's specific for the diagnosis of osteomyelitis or it adds specificity to the diagnosis of osteomyelitis because remember on a t1 the bone is often bright and fatty right but when you have dark signal that replaces that marrow that is suggestive of chronic osteomyelitis in the setting of infection i think there's important buzzwords that everyone should know when they're describing and thinking about chronic osteomyelitis one is a sequestrum, which is what I just showed. It's an area of sclerosis or ne ne necrotic devitalized bone. That's what a sequestrum is. An involucrum is actually that periosteal reaction, that new bone formation that walls off the infection. That's what we mean when we say involucrum, that periosteitis or new bone formation that sort of shells out or shells off the infection. The cloaca was with a second image that I showed you. That's the cortical defect that actually allows a sinus tract to form, right? It allows the pus or the infection effective material that to come out of the marrow, go into the soft tissues, to the skin surface, and allows that sinus tract to form. So that's what a cloaca is. And of course, a Brody's abscess is usually seen, uh, it's an intraosseous abscess, typically seen in the metaphysis of a long bone, right? So uh, that's what a Brody's abscess is. That's usually seen in like subacute to chronic osteomyelitis. So these are the most important buzzwords that I think all trainees and all attendings should know when thinking about chronic osteomyelitis. Thank you so much for your attention. Please subscribe to the MedED page. Tune in next week for another high-yield MSK unknown case.